Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and the third hour on Thursdays. We have major updates from Tim Alexander, who often puts uh, updates on our live stream TV channel. Uh, Tim, there's a lot of things brewing. We're up to day nine now of the warm up to WW3. And we're not talking about George Bush, WW, we're talking about World War III. Uh, these fools are actually pushing the envelope uh, and aggravating Russia, China. Uh, the Syrian flight was stopped by Turkey by forcing it to the ground and, and abusing the flight crew, trying to force them to say that they, uh, they were going to agree to a lot of the things that the Turks did to them. Of course, Turkey is well known as a torture center. Uh, Turkey, yeah, is, really pushing uh, Turkey is, is not one place you'd want to go to prison. Um, uh, it's not by accident that Europe won't allow Turkey uh, into the uh, EU. Uh, Turkey has now placed, as of uh, this morning, uh, its entire army on a high state of readiness. Uh, this is indicative of the fact that Turkey intends to invade uh, Syria pretty soon. Uh, they basically have an invasion force forming on the Syrian border. Lots of planes, lots of tanks, lots of artillery, and lots of mechanized uh, infantry. Um, you know, it's it's not looking good. When they intercepted a Syrian Airlines uh, civilian flight from Moscow to Damascus uh, with U.S. made F-16 fighters, uh, that was a slap in the face to Russia. Yet, uh, when they they tried to force or did force some of the flight crew into signing a statement that they had requested an emergency landing, um, they beat uh, a couple of the the crew members uh, to get them to do this. They were handcuffed and held. Um, multiple witnesses among the the passengers and crew observed that uh, there was no munitions, there was no military equipment, uh, there was some electronics, evidently, uh, I think probably walkie-talkies, uh, what we would have called walkie-talkie a year ago, two small handheld two-way radios. Uh, may have been uh, in part of, uh, you know, part of the uh, standard stuff that was being shipped. Uh, that is not an excuse to send armed jet fighters after a civilian airplane. There are rules for transiting airspace. All countries know these rules. All countries obey these rules. This was an act of war by Turkey. It was unnecessary. This is what you do when you want to start a war. Turkey is doing everything it can to intimidate and to basically force the Syrians into response to defend themselves. And, of course, once you have that response, then it will scream for NATO, big brother NATO, to come in with American, British, French, German, etc. troops um, and to, to fight the big bad Syrians. Russia now has already directly been brought into this, although the Russians at the highest level for the last couple months and then lately almost daily at the highest levels have been warning about uh, this very type of thing uh, and that war uh, and a change, literally a, a global war, is apt to, to happen if Syria and or Iran are attacked. The Chinese government at the highest levels have also made that statement, and they've, some of their top generals have even gone so far as to say that China is prepared to enter into nuclear warfare if Iran and uh, Syria are attacked. Now, this is as serious as it gets, and it's as unnecessary as it gets. Why do we Americans want to go to war with Syria? Or Iran. They haven't attacked us. Iran hasn't launched a war for 200 years. The Syrian people were peaceful until we started, uh, along with the Gulf Cooperative uh, states, the, uh, the conservative Arab monarchies, funneling uh, uh, jihad fighters from throughout Arabia, and, and uh, the the Arabs are paying them, you know, a hundred thousand, fifty thousand, sometimes hundred and fifty thousand each, depending on their military experience, to go in and fight the Syrians. Syria was one of the most peaceful countries on earth, and then uh, on this show, I had a uh, 
a Eastern Orthodox uh, priest that uh, went there, had dinner with Assad, went all over the country, was free to travel, and he said the people largely support him, and the people fighting him are, are, are uh, from outside the country. It's now established that 95% of the so-called uh, freedom fighters are not Syrian citizens. They're from Algeria, they're from uh, Tunisia, they're from Egypt, wherever. And uh, th th this is a made-up war by America, by Israel, by uh, the NATO powers. And the last thing on earth, as we're in a new Great Depression, that Americans need is to spend more trillions of dollars on another unnecessary war, much less to get involved into the Third World War. But everything is tied together. In Spain, uh, the economy has just virtually collapsed. The Spanish uh, bonds are now rated uh, by the various rating services as BBB minus with a negative outlook. Yesterday, uh, there was a march, uh, anti-government, anti-Merkel march in Greece, and a large number of Greek military special forces reservists from all their branches, uh, Army, uh, special forces, uh, Navy, CBs, etc., marched down the street in uniform against the government. Now, that is a major step. The people of Greece, the people of Spain, and increasingly in Italy and Portugal and other countries are literally so fed up, and the army and the police now are at the point they realize that their own politicians are, pardon the language, they're nothing but political whores that are serving the interest of the Rothschild Empire and the, the global banking cartel. And they are raping and robbing the people of their country. They're destroying their country. And the military now are beginning to say they've had enough. We haven't seen anything like this in Europe since before the Second World War. And the, the global banking cartel, they want a Third World War or something which they will call the Third World War, which may or may not be the ultimate war. Uh, it probably will be, but the timing, God knows we don't. But the point is, they need something dramatic to be able to in, uh, impose wartime uh, military controls on the civilian population. They need to, to scare the heck out of everybody so they don't overthrow uh, their puppets in the various parliaments and capitals of Europe and, and the United States. And it's bad, and it's, it's going to get worse, much worse, because the economy globally is just at the point of collapse. Well, in fact, uh, Spain is a perfect example of where America will be in 2016 if Obama gets in, because the policies that were put in place in Spain are precisely what Obama wants to do. Green energy, uh, green economy, uh, austerity fascism, all kinds of things that contract the credit, contract the economy, rescue big banks, everything that Obama wants to do that will absolutely destroy the economy. Well, I think Obama's a monster, and you're not going to hear a word of support from me from Obama. But at the same time, I, I don't think Romney, I think Romney is the flip side of the coin. I think that, that we now live, uh, our democracy has been flushed down the toilet. First off, uh, most of us vote uh, with computers. And if you vote on a computer, and if a computer counts your vote, Good luck, Charlie, because it's not going, your vote is worthless. He who controls the source code controls the outcome of the election. Well, I, I, after the election, here's the, I'll give it my analysis when we come back, because it's just, like I say, when you have, when you're dealing with the, the floating debris from a sinking boat, you have to pick out which thing you're going to jump on, if it's a floating door or a bucket. And that's the kind of situation we're in now in America. We'll be back in a minute. Uh, Tim Alexander, Tim, um, there's a lot of news to cover today. I might just like, 
you know, every day you get up and you think, I can't be possibly overwhelmed today because it can't be that bad. And then you check in for day nine, as I say in your blog, it says fuse lit day nine. Uh, yesterday was a downing of the Syrian jet heading from Russia to Syria and then beating up on the life crew, uh, the shelling, which we know now started off with an Al-Qaeda member shelling a Syrian town, uh, sorry, a Turkish town on the border with Syria, killing five people, women and children, started well, this thing off. Well, they knew that. This, this was a false flag, and it was probably set up at a very high level. Right. And, and, and they kept it going. They, the, the Turks shelled for six days. Uh, now, Divka, which comes uh, basically uh, has very deep ties to the Mossad, Divka says that this, uh, the latest with uh, forcing down the Syrian airliner, especially with the Russians on board, that this is uh, the first step in establishing a no-fly zone and uh, that the Turkish Air Force will soon be establishing that perhaps with uh, air forces from Saudi Arabia, Oman, uh, and some of the Gulf Cooperative states assisting the Turks. Now, that is a script for a disaster on a scale that's just unimaginable. Well, first off, and, if they invade, what will happen is not only will they have short-range missiles hitting into Israel, they'll have long-range missiles coming from Iran that can strike any of the capitals of any nation in NATO that decides to attack. Well, because and, they have a and, defense and there treaty. are a limit to the numbers, although the numbers are significant, but they're not going to waste those missiles with uh, dumb warheads. And, and uh, the, what I mean by that term, that's the term when uh, people in the business refer to simply high explosive warheads. The, the minimum they'll use fuel air explosive submunitions. Uh, they may or may not be uh, liquefied gas. They may be uh, powdered aluminum, whatever. But you'll get in, that alone is three to four times the uh, explosive force. But when all this goes down, you'll be you'll be seeing radiological warheads. You'll be seeing uh, chemical warheads. You'll uh, and uh, quite possibly advanced biologicals. This is this is not. This has been building for some time. The longer a war it takes to build, generally the greater the the intensity and the worse the war is. Now you mentioned and, an interesting link here, Tim. You mentioned NYPD chief city on uh, alert for alert for Iran terror. If you go visit a, a New York City, and it's a wonderful city, very smart people. Uh, there's a lot of smart Jewish people and many other people there, many nationalities. It's actually the Iran. largest Jewish city on earth. Right now. A lot of the Muslims call it Jew York City, right? Now, yeah, that's not well, to be a racial well, slur. It's not to be a racial slur, but here's the point. It's number one, target number one, if there's an attack on Iran and Syria, there will be terrorist activity, even if it's, quote, self-inflicted, just like 9-11 was, that attack on New York, because they wanted to make a connection there. Just like right now, the the peril of of, of Israel under the, quote, idea of being struck by a nation far off with nuclear weapons from Iran is ridiculous. Uh, Iran is is not a nuclear uh, Even threat. if they were, they wouldn't they wouldn't look if they had a half a dozen or a hundred weapons. Uh, look at Pakistan. Pakistan's a much better position to attack Israel. They've got hundreds, three, four hundred weapons. Pakistan uh, Pakistan has one new uh, thermonuclear weapons faculty uh, plant that alone is producing 50 hydrogen bombs a year. Now, that's in addition to it, its pre-existing infrastructure, which managed to crank out over 150 or so uh, atomic warheads in the last handful of years. So that shows what the, the production capability of a nation once they're fully ramped up. Now, if you want to look at Israel, everybody keeps saying, well, Israel's got two or three hundred nukes. Those figures are 20 and 30 years old. Yeah, they were on 800 probably and 1200. Has a th close to a thousand nuclear warheads. Or more. And they also, by the way, have micro, micro nukes plus the exotic micro weapons nukes. as well. Absolutely. Yeah, neutron weapons. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, these people uh, are, are, are loaded to the max in Israel, but also, you know, some of the other countries in the area. 
And this is 21st century warfare, okay? Uh, it's not a nice thing. It's a horrible thing. And uh, uh, we don't need a 21st century world war. We don't need uh, something shy of an all-out world war. Uh, that will we involve, don't, involve weapons of mass you, you, destruction because you, you don't even need a full blown war if you have just uh, two guys in a gunboat to drop half a dozen uh, advanced electronic death charges in the Persian Gulf near the Strait of Hormuz. The insurance carriers will shut the strait down. Well, let's, put, that it happens, this way. We're like, let's put it this way right now, the global economy is in the process of collapsing. If you add to that a little minor thing like uh, taking most of the, uh, uh, the oil in the Middle East out of the market and shooting the price of gas from four or five dollars a gallon to you know I don't know it hit four sixty nine here in California. You know. it, it hit four sixty nine here in California by the way this last week and it dropped half a cent yesterday but it hit four sixty nine. Oh, wow. Four sixty nine. Well, wow. it's like yeah. dropped half a cent. Well, wow. yeah. You, were you very careful where you spent that half a cent? No, no, not careful. <laughs> no. I mean, you know, uh, we have said, and I've carried articles that were back a year or more ago, that when gas hits five dollars, the the United States will go into total economic meltdown. Five dollars a gallon, and we're. Uh, we're, we haven't even had uh, the Gulf of Hormuz shut down yet. Yeah. And we're approaching that. And then things begin in California for all of my lifetime, and I'm pushing 62. Well, that's 61. why we have Prop 37, too, to actually shut down the GMO food, and I think it's going to pass. I think our Californians are informed well, enough. GMO is pray now. Remember now, Obama, by the way, Obama put, is pushing the Japanese in to have the nuke plants reactivated. He's pushing to actually get the courts to make sure that they will, will make sure GMO foods are continuing to be shoved down our throats. This man is not just stupid. He's damned evil. And I have to, to make a statement here about, about Romney. Uh, and now Rom Romney is a Mormon. Mormons are not Christians. But they're more conservative in terms of generally, if you talk about Mormons, than Christians or Catholics. The most conservative group I've dealt with are Mormons first, then Catholics, and then so-called Christians. Okay, Islam, you can't consider them because there's so many wacky things they do that, are, that make the appearance of being really good, but they do really evil things like honor killings and other activities that they're not in the group. Now, Mormons believes some pretty damn weird philosophy as I say his magic underwear and his summa cum laude uh, L, uh, law degree and the masters in business administration Romney beat the heck out of Obama who couldn't have his wee wee teleprompter but here's what's likely to happen in 2008 to 2012 the previously pro abortion and by the way a lot of people who are pro-life now used to be strongly pro quote, women's rights and abortion. In fact, some of the strongest people were previously nurses and doctors who did abortions and are right now the strongest pro-life people you can imagine. And Romney's seen the light. We can see it from Ross Reed. We know that this man can fix the economy. We've got to give him a chance. I know a little bit more about Deagle. I have a lot of guts. Welcome back. And uh, we're talking about the pro-life issue. And uh, if people hear my testimony, like I gave it in 1997 at the steps of the of the uh, anniversary of Roe versus Wade, which, by the way, if we had a a uh, Congress that actually just brought forth and said that the moment of conception was the moment of life, the Roe versus Wade decision would completely disappear because we already have the personhood issue. We've talked about this with uh, with uh, Dr. Fred Graves and other experts. Uh, abortion is used as a political football. I personally believe that Mitt Romney, whether it's because of pressure from the Mormon Church or not, is since 2008 he is pro-life. 
Rex Reed believes it, and I hear all this other garbage from other so-called experts that thinks he is it. Number two, it needs to be sidelined because, number one, once we deal with a personal issue, Roe versus Wade, the very first thing, and Mitt Romney's already stated it, the very first thing that Obama did before he signed any other piece of paper, he took back the sanction against using U.S. taxpayer money to fund international abortions in places like Kenya, which is supposedly his home country, which it isn't. His father was Frank Marshall Davis, who was an American, a black communist, and a member of the Communist Party that uh, supported uh, <laughs> the real commies in, in Russia. Okay, So if you look at the documentary, so what we have here is a situation where Romney could fix the economy because he knows how to problem solve. Yes, he's a Mormon, and Mormons are not Christians, but they're conservative. Do we want four more years of Obama and the country destroyed? And if you look at Obamacare, if you look at what, what he's going to do with the country with the green economy, if you look at everything, we have, we're like at the side of, the, of a wreckage in the ocean, and there's a few pieces of material that they're floating on. You can float on a piece of, of wood that actually looks like you might be able to actually swim to shore if you kick or use something as a paddle, or you can grab a bucket and probably go to the bottom. Well, Obama's that bucket. Uh, we cannot have another four years of Obama. We now have, at least externally or under whatever conditions of restraint from the Mormon church, a pro-life uh, individual, Mitt Romney, who is not a Christian, who believes someday he'll be a god. I don't care what his motivations is. If he's going to do right by America, if he's going to make jobs so Americans don't go bankrupt, if he's going to not do stupid well, well, things... Well, what I want to know is where do I get this magic underwear? You can hey, listen. You, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what. The magic underwear because I examined. I had when I had my practice in 1980. I bought it from the Mormon prophet's daughter's husband's brother, and I never became a Mormon. Okay, I studied with them for four months just to see what they're all about, all their doctrines and everything, and other information. I can tell you, uh, Mormonism is bizarre. It's also very arrogant. It is the nidus and the full crux of what Masonry is. Now, when you talk about masonry, America was not founded by supposedly Christians. It was founded by Masons. There was a few Christians in there, just like the state of Israel it was founded by Sabbatean Jews. And we're going to have a special on next Monday with Barry Chalmish in hour one and three. And he's probably the pressing world expert on this because he's a Jew himself. Uh, and the Sabbatean Jews were basically allied with the communists. They're atheists. They believe in the Luciferic power. Uh, if you think Islam is bad, well, Sabbatai and Judaism... Most early on were, were Jewish. Most of the, well, the Russian communists were. They're Sabbatai and Jews. So they're Sabbateans. They're basically the founding members of the, of the Bolshevik Revolution. Now, people don't know any of this history, so they don't realize that 122,000 plus of the SS were actually full of part blood Jews, but they're all Sabbatai and Satanists. Okay, so well, while they're sending it, off the regular, it, it, they're sending off the Torah Jews and the rabbis who believed in the Torah rather the than the Talmud. Were always uh, uh, were, were were radical extremists uh, right. because of my roommate in college, uh, his father was the U.S. Right. military but, 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 in Israel. But still, still, the, the, I used to hear the, all the. Yeah, so right. the, the fact ahead. is, though, there, there's a unitus of a mustard seed of real Torah Jews in Israel and in. As I say, Jew, well, there's a lot of very good, very good Jewish people in Israel. You better believe it. And also, some of the most creative people. But the reason why Satan wants to stomp them out is because they're the people of the book. Even if they didn't believe it, they didn't alter a jot or tittle for fear of changing one little thing because they knew there was a creator God. Now, what we have here is a situation where Satan's decided he's going to finally stomp out the Jews. He wants to start a war with all the shiny nuclear and other weapons Israel has. If they start this war, most of the people that are not in underground nuclear uh, hardened bunkers, they're going to die. They're going to die. As it says in the Bible, the, the blood will be up to the horses' bridles. The bridle well, of the horses is up where the most is. The million figure is apt to, to be the, the actual number of the 7 million uh, Jews in Israel. Uh, you may very well see six out of seven die. And right. I mean, I've been warning at the top of my lungs for several years now well, that, uh, Mary that himself is hey. going to get all of his people killed, and, and well, he's a nut. Yeah. And I think that many of the top intelligence people and military people agree with me.
Well, that's why this is in these 16 uh, government agencies, 82 page report, Joint Chiefs of Staff has said Israel is number one, hasn't integrated their military, strategic uh, forces, their space uh, imaging systems, or anything with America. They're a loose cannon on the deck, as the British used to say. This is very dangerous. The Israelis could start a, a counterattack or a preemptive attack at any time, like the 1973 Six Day War, where they just waited and decided we're not going to wait till the uh, such and such of Jordanians or Syrians launched from their airports, we're going to go and blast them while the planes are on the ground. And they did. Well, of course, the, the, the flip side of that coin is the uh, surprise attack that the Arabs pulled. And, and you know what? Uh, the, the Syrians and Iranians may reach a, a, a decision that, okay, uh, we're not going to be able to hold this off anymore. Why don't we just go ahead and take the initiative because the side that strikes first has a certain advantage and, and it's going to be uh, Katie bar the door anyway once well, well, we you, get going. Tim, you're an expert on the Navy. What's the term for shooting, they call them ducks in a barrel, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what they're going to have with all our navels there, or their fancy ships with the phalanx anti-missile systems and all the other stuff. They're ducks in a barrel. When you have the Akansai Persona cruise missile and the super cavitation torpedoes and all the other nasties like the... Like I, the I, 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 I have a lot, a, a great deal of respect for the U.S. Navy. Uh, a cousin of mine was one of their top um, uh, people in the Department of the Navy in terms of weapon systems. And... and uh, we we have the best navy on earth, but the Straits of Hormuz is a kill zone. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's like a it, ducks in a barrel. It, yeah, any uh, system that uh, shoots down incoming missiles or, or incoming uh, underwater rockets, which is what uh, the the V one eleven underwater. Uh, 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 torpedo is, and the, the Iranians have copied it, and they have their own as well as some they bought from Russia. Uh, I think we probably have some defenses against that, but you can overwhelm defenses. Leaky, leaky defenses. Leaky defenses. Well, you know, I mean, you, you can take care of 20, and they shoot 21 at you, or 30, and yeah. and uh, we're going to get a lot of our boys killed. Exactly. Now, we're yeah. going to kill a lot of them. But uh, that kind of goes back to yeah, why do we want to do this? What's the yeah. advantage to the average American to get involved in one more damn war in the Middle East for the neocoms, for the globalists, for the 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 nuttiest of uh, of the Zionists? What's the advantage to us? And well, in fact, if we're of talking uh, World War Three. There's no advantage to anybody. I got three sons of military age, and they're not going to serve in an army to die in a foreign land for bankers. Now, yeah. we're going to hear from Chris because we've got some major updates on Fukushima. But what we're dealing with here is, Tim, you've done some of the fantastic research, and they need to look at your whole blog. We'll get back to it in a minute of just how close we are, unless there's either a false peace treaty, which I think is coming very quickly because the, the tabernacle, which can be put up overnight, is literally... Almost certainly going to happen in the next president. They have a, mo president. Mo uh, a, a altar that they can carry in. Right. And that's likely to happen by as early as next year. In other words, the tabernacles yet next year may be the time when they sanctify the Temple Mount to start blood sacrifice. And again. every Literally. Muslim on earth is supposed to fight. You know, right. they do that. At that I point, mean, it'll bring forth. Crazy at that point, stuff. It'll, yeah, at that point, it'll bring forth their Imam Mahdi, the final Whatever. Mahdi. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, if you don't think that these things are happening, it's kind of you close your eyes and open them again. So, oh my gosh, this is real. It's not a nightmare. Back in a moment with Chris Harris. We have Chris Harris here with some updates from the nuclear issues. Chris, tell us what's going on. Oh, uh, there's a couple of things. I guess we'd want to start with Ken and Oprah because that's what we were talking about, about the break. You know, and I don't. You know, when I go through, uh, I raise an, uh, an issue on on your program. And I'm I'm uh, honored to be able to do that. Uh, there are a lot of 
little issues that go by, and I look at them and I say, well, sloppy this, sloppy that, but it's not important. But when San Onofre occurred, you know, I, I was pretty much uh, right on the ball, and I said, listen, this is going to be a, an enormous big deal even before anybody else was really saying that. And, and there's a reasons why. And now, after a very long time, San Onofre, that's the plan out by you, Dr. Bill, um, yeah. has answered uh, a lot. A, a, they responded to a lot of questions from the NRC as, as to what you did and what you're going to do to, to mitigate the uh, circumstances that you have. That is uh, steam generators with a lot of wear in the tubes, and some of them are actually perforated. And these tubes, and this, now, we're, now we're going over to a pressurized water reactor, which is different than the uh, GE type, but they, these rely on tubes in steam generators. I did send you uh, a document that's 82 pages long that did have some uh, decent pictures in there about what they actually look like. Yeah, and in fact, you did. that's interesting. When you look at these, uh, that's the second one, and the second batch that says nrc.gov forward slash reading uh, dash rm forward slash doc collectives collections event status. Uh, and then the other 82 page report, it says here's the 82 page report and outlines a plan. Uh, I read in this North County News yesterday that there's three major uh, civilian a action groups that basically say, no, we want to re licensure, that this is not safe. And this is literally an experiment where 7.6 to 8 point million Americans within 50 mile radius of the plant could be experimented on, and they give a massive radiation release there because these are an open sieve. These tubes are smacking together, vibrating even the so-called retention plate. And I want you to explain this. If people go down and look at that diagram, I think it's, what, page 54 of the document somewhere around that or one of the attachments at the back end? Uh, I, I believe so. Uh, what, what's going on is that um, in, in some respects, the new steam generators appear to be working better than they thought. Now, here's, now here's the reason why I'm saying that. You're counting on to prevent uh, flow-induced vibration something called steam quality. And the steam that's coming out at the tops of that steam generator, and there was a photograph of that, is so dry at that point. In other words, it, it's dry steam. You want to have some moisture in that steam to prevent, uh, so that you can dampen the vibrations. Now, this is an error. It's an error in the design of the steam generators. They're supposed yeah, to what, what you're saying is the laminar flow of the steam is faster than what their computer model projected, and that laminar right. flow sets up vibration in the tubes that then vibrate against the what's called the retention plate. And you actually show pictures of this. So these steam tubes, which are really long, start to bang against each other, and eventually they rupture. Uh, yeah, they certainly can rupture, and they're certainly wearing it. Some, some of them did, did rupture. Now, in the other report that you uh, mentioned about the, uh, uh, the event report number, just yesterday, uh, the Mitsubishi company, or the day before yesterday, um, the Mitsubishi, they, they built these new steam generators, and they're the ones with the, uh, you know, with the, the error in the design. Uh, they put out a generic Part 21 uh, report saying that anybody who's got these steam generators, you got to look at this. And the reason is that we're you can you can also get the same problem basically right and by the way this is universal design this is not just a GE design this design is universal across the industry for steam turbine generators and there's a whole pile of them here in America in Europe and elsewhere so out of 500 plus nuclear reactors in the world a whole lot of them have this inherent engineering defect they, they have a potential for this inherent engineering defect and they got to look at it and they got to figure out what's going on before you get a steam generator tube rupture. Steam generator right. tube rupture, I'll tell you from personal experience, as an operator, was one of the more vexing uh, 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 scenarios that you can get because it really is a loss of coolant accident, but yet it's masked. It's loss of coolant accident where if you get a, if you get a, a, a typical loss of coolant accident, most of, most of the times it goes inside containment. And you can recollect that water and re-inject it into the uh, reactor cooling system. This is water that's lost. It's inventory that goes over to the secondary side. It's not reclaimable. So you've got to, so it's very critical to, uh, to stop that leakage. The only way you can do it is to get on cooling down that plant as fast as you can and to equalize the pressure between the secondary side and the primary side so that you don't, you, you, you curtail blowing water. It, it's certainly a more, uh, taxing kind of, uh, it's an emergency. Yeah. And really so in other words, uh, just doing it at 70% power isn't going to fix it. And uh, the other issue is that the number of they did was called like for like engineering transfers when they upgraded these original designs done years ago, and so there's a lot more steam tubes 
on the same array as it used to be in the original design, so it's not like for like, it's a complete engineering change, and there's this universal problem. What's likely to happen is, and this is why these three civilian groups are out there, If you, you can Google it yourself and find out what they've been saying in the newspapers, but they're basically saying they need a relicensure of the entire system. Now, McFarland and these people need to listen up, because I know they're doing government reports. You can be sued, McFarland, and all the members of the NRC. You might think you have immunity, executive immunity, because you're operating as an arm or quasi-arm of the government as a regulatory agency. If you put the public in danger, you can be sued and or your assets seized, and you can be put in prison. So you need to be aware that we're damned mad here, and I live 12 miles from San Onofre, and you're not going to start that damn plant up again until you have proper relicensure. And personally, I think all nuclear plants need to be re-upgraded to at least pebble bed reactors. Thorium reactors are dangerous, and all nuclear reactors in America have three problems. They all boil off tritium. They all have giant deposits of radioisotopes that they don't remove from there. They should have specially designed rail cars. These should never be on the freeway. They should always be removed by rail. And they have no proper safety precautions around many of these plants or the storage depots around them against so-called terrorism or even an accident or extreme weather. Uh, I contacted Senator Daschle after 9-11 in October, October of uh, 2001, and I told him, I said, oh, I was one of the doctors uh, after Shell Oil had the contract, the Shell uh, Medical Division, and uh, we had Dr. Jaffe, who was one of the senior doctors back in the 80s there, and we had uh, identified all kinds of liquid radioactive waste sitting on concrete pads out in the open that could easily be hit by an APC armored personnel carrier or a Humvee just crashing through literally a chain link fence. There's nothing stopping it. There's no standing army. There's no security forces. There's nothing. Uh, a radio controlled drone coming in there, a small light airplane, uh, anything could hit those and cause a massive release of radiation. And so none of these issues are dealt with and they're not dealing with uh, the new earthquake report with a high fired rifle. You can have a sniper two miles away decide to shoot at the damn thing and cause a rupture of a tank, and who's the hell is going to know? He could be in the back of a pickup truck two miles away with a long distance sniper rifle. Well, yeah, I'll bear it 50 cal. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, we're, we're raising these issues because one of the biggest problems I found is quote, lack of intelligence, number one, lack of one ag government agency talking to another, and lack of people because they're fearful they're going to lose their job or worse because they raise issues or ask questions. And Dr. Deagle asks lots of questions. I'm Dr. Q. Questions. I want to know, inquiring minds want to know what the hell is going on, and I didn't get good questions. People say, what's the essence of genius? The essence of genius is you ask more questions than the answers you received the previous day. That's the essence. In other words, an agitated mind that wants the hell to know what's really going on and won't take BS for an answer. Uh, I guess uh, maybe a really quick one on Fukushima, which is kind of important. This week they went Yeah, kind of important because the thing is still boiling and ready to blow, plus the Hamioka plants and the uh, and the uh, are, are sitting literally these Hemioka plants and these other plants sitting between the Sendai fault line zone and Mount Fuji, which the with the the magma chamber is building, and it's going to blow. There's also these ones. The what do they call them? What's the other one? They, they're built literally out on a point with geothermal zones all around it. When you go in there, there's all these mountainous areas or semi-mountainous areas and geothermal hot springs all around the site where this nuclear reactor is built out on a spit of land in Japan, literally sitting on a fault line. How crazy is that? Absolutely. Closing comments, Chris. All right, just uh, we'll, we'll keep on talking about it and um, we'll get resolution one way or the other. So, to summarize, Fukushima yeah. is still Fukushima. Uh, Not Fukushima, getting any better, nobody's doing it. But I figured they couldn't find water where they where they wanted to. They went in as a, it was a big elaborate operation. They went in with an endoscope kind of a deal, and they couldn't. That was that in Reactor One, right? Yeah, that was the latest report which we have posted. Right. And that water went somewhere. Or I have an idea where it went. It, right. The other, of course, is that we are still seeing the evidence that there was a Reactor Three was a plutonium nuclear weapons development facility illegally in Japan.